Hello, my name is Bill Kinney, and I'm a professor of mathematics at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. And this is the first of a series of videos that I'm, I'm titling Foundations of Arithmetic, Algebra, and Graphing. And in this particular video, which is indeed video number one, I've titled it Natural Numbers, Whole Numbers, Integers, Addition, and Subtraction, Part 1. So this is the first of a series again. I'm trying to keep these about five to ten minutes long. I will review the basics of arithmetic, arithmetic algebra, and graphing with, a, with an eye toward talking about applications in real life as I go. And also focusing on meanings of things as well as skills. So let's start off with some basic concepts and some terminology. Uh, first of all, there's the concept of what's of something called a natural number. And typically, the natural numbers are also called, called the counting numbers and are considered to start with the number 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. Some basic properties, of course, are that this is an infinite list indicated by the dot, dot, dots here. It goes on forever. Also note that typically the convention is not to include the number 0 in the natural numbers. If we do include 0, we call it the set of whole numbers. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. This is supposed to be a 5 here. That would be the collection or set of whole numbers that goes on forever as well. One basic thing to note here, of course, also is that if you add two natural numbers, you get another natural number that's called closure. If you add two whole numbers, you get another whole number that is also closure. And 0 has the additional property that if you add 0 to any one of these numbers, uh, you get the same number back. For example, uh, 5 plus 0 is 5. If we want to expand our universe to include negative numbers, we call those the integers. And the integers are what's called a doubly infinite sequence. Uh, the numbers go on forever, both to the right here and to the left. Um, each natural number has a corresponding negative number or you might call it its opposite. The opposite of 3 is negative 3. It's also sometimes called the additive inverse. The additive inverse of 3 is negative 3 and the reason we call it the additive, additive inverse is because 3 plus negative 3 is 0. 0 being again the additive identity. Any number plus 0 is that other number. You might um, these, this is the basics here. Zero actually took a while to be accepted. Of course, the natural numbers are very natural. You can use them to count things. But what do you do when you have nothing to count? Well, you can call that zero things. But it took a while for that to be accepted as a number. And the negative numbers took a while to be accepted as well. Uh, they finally gained acceptance because they do have applications. And a basic application of negative numbers is um, cash flow. If you take your net income, uh, you know, after taxes, and subtract your net expenses, or you could just call it expenses I get, I guess, you could call that your cash flow. It's convenient to treat it this way in all cases, and then say if your net income is bigger than your net expenses, then this difference is going to be positive, and you have a positive cash flow. On the other hand, if you spend more than you take in, this difference is negative, you have a negative cash flow which then is bad. Positive cash flow, of course, is good for you. Negative cash flow is bad. You want positive cash flow. Another basic kind of application is to motion. If we imagine the ground here, this is supposed to be the ground and a hole in the ground, That's the ground. This is your hole, of course, the top of the hole is up there. And you imagine yourself standing here. I typically will just draw stick figures. Standing here with a ball. And let's say you throw the ball straight up. Of course, because of gravity, it'll come straight back down. And if there's a hole there, it'll go into the hole. It is usually most convenient um, if you want to keep track of the height of the ball, to treat the ground as being height zero, so this is a zero over here, 
not an O or an M circle, that's a zero. Usually, well again, if you're keeping track of height, you'd want to say this direction is positive height. And so if the ball goes up to here, maybe that's, looks like that's maybe about seven feet high. Um, that would be a positive height. But then when the ball comes back down and goes into the hole, you could, of course, say, you know, if the ball was right here, that the ball was three feet, say, below the ground level. But it is convenient to consider that to be height negative three feet or position negative three feet when dealing with this kind of motion, that is more convenient than, than always saying seven feet up or three feet down, just say height seven or height negative three, or alternatively position seven or position negative three. It's a convenience. It, it helps make things cleaner. To wrap the video up today, for this, for this video, um, I want to emphasize one more aspect about app applications of addition and subtraction. Of course, the most basic kind of application of addition is that if you've got, for example, two groups of things, in this case these are supposed to be nickels, two nickels over here and three nickels over here, and you combine them, how many nickels do you have all together? Of course, it's two plus three equals five nickels all together. When you think of subtraction as taking away, um, you'd always want to subtract a smaller number from a larger number when you're thinking of it that way. So the addition here is illustrating that 2 plus 3 equals 5. The subtraction is, if I take away 4 of these, is illustrating that 5 minus 4 equals 1. If you take away 4 nickels, you're going to have 1 left over. This kind of... Um, application, if you will, doesn't work, of course, if you are uh, subtracting a bigger number from a smaller one. You can't have a negative number of nickels. That's one comment I want to make here. The other comment I want to make to finish off the video is that if you also have some quarters, let's say you have three quarters, and let's go back to saying you have five nickels. If you wanted to take the five nickels and the three quarters, and add them, technically speaking, to say you get eight, you'd want to change the unit to being coins instead of nickels and quarters individually. Whenever you add or subtract things in applications, you want to make sure that the units match up. So if I've got five nickels and three quarters and I add them, I don't want to say that's eight nickel quarters or something like that. If I wanted to add them to get eight, I'd want to change my units to something more broad than nickels and quarters. I want to change it to, say, coins. Five coins plus three coins equals eight coins altogether. So that's a basic idea uh, with applying addition and subtraction. Very clear, hopefully, in this particular case, but very important and sometimes not so clear in more complicated situations. So you want to keep that in mind. And that's the end of this first video.